Welcome to the series about linear programming. In this lesson, we look at what linear programming is, how it is useful to us, and how it's used in the workplace. Don't be scared of the term linear programming. Linear programming is something we do quite naturally every day when we make choices about what we do, what we buy, what we say. We try to identify all the factors that influence the situation and then we weigh them up to make the best or optimal decision. In maths, we use linear programming to help us do the same thing. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain what linear programming is and identify the constraints and objectives in a real situation. Before we carry on with linear programming, I'd like you to watch the following scene and notice what choices Vanessa and Nick have to consider and how they arrive at a decision. I don't want to ride home in this. We're going to get soaked. I think we should wait until it stops. It doesn't look like it's going to stop soon and we have to get home before it gets dark. I don't have a light on my bike. Okay, I guess we'd better go. I suppose we're just delaying getting wet. Let's go. Let's ride as fast as we can. The faster we go, the sooner we can be dry again. My brakes aren't that good. If we ride too fast, I won't be able to stop suddenly. When the wheels are wet, we could slip. And the drivers of cars probably can't see us so well in this rain. But if we go too slowly, we'll get drenched. Let me ride in front. I'll look out for danger, and if I go too fast, just shout. OK, I trust you, but be careful. I'm sure you've been caught in the rain before and you've had to make quick decisions like Vanessa and Nick. Vanessa and Nick want to get home as soon as possible to avoid getting wet. We call that the objective, the thing you want to achieve. Vanessa and Nick need to decide how to achieve their objective of getting home in as short a time as possible. At first, it seems obvious they should ride as fast as they possibly can. But Vanessa realizes that this is risky because her brakes are not good and she might not be able to stop quickly enough in the rain. Keeping safe in this situation is a constraint or restriction. A constraint is something that limits your choice. In this case, the issue of safety limits how fast Vanessa and Nick can get home. We can phrase the problem more formally like this. Vanessa and Nick want to achieve the objective of getting home as quickly as possible, subject to the constraint of safety. Let's have a look at another situation. Oh, thanks. You know, I can't decide which one of the two boxes of breakfast cereal to buy. And they both have a list of their nutrients on the back. Don't worry about that. You know which one I like. It's the chocolate flavored one. So buy that. Yes, I know. But you know, our brother doesn't like it. And I want the one that is most healthy. Well, I think that it's just more important to buy the one that we like. Well, I'll keep that in mind. But I want you to get the right mix and amount of essential nutrients in your diet. And I want to get the best value for money. It kind of takes the fun out of shopping, doesn't it? Yes, I guess it does. Shopping is full of difficult decisions. The advantage of this one is that it has more recommended daily amount of nutrients per serving. So, you don't have to eat as much to meet your health needs. On the other hand, this one is much cheaper. But I would have to give you larger servings to meet your nutritional requirements. And that will affect the cost. 
The decision we saw the mother struggling with is a decision that shoppers face every day as they shop. They want to get the best value for money. In this case, the mother wanted to choose the most cost-effective breakfast cereal. This is her objective. But the price wasn't the only thing to consider. She wanted to choose the cereal with the best nutritional value and still consider her children's likes and dislikes. We can call these the constraints. Let's see if we can summarize the problem facing the mother. She needs to achieve the objective of choosing the most cost-effective breakfast cereal subject to the constraints that her choice meets the nutritional needs of her children and the flavors that they prefer. In the end, like all shoppers, the mother considered her options and made a choice. The two scenarios we have looked at so far both involved situations in which people had to make choices in order to achieve a desired outcome or objective. Their choices were influenced by certain requirements or constraints. In our daily lives, we tend to solve these problems using whatever knowledge we have and using our common sense. Linear programming is a branch of mathematics that can help with this kind of decision making. In linear programming, we use a mathematical method or technique to help us find the best solution from a range of possible solutions subject to certain constraints. The solution that is the best possible solution given the constraints is called the optimal solution. Two mathematicians, Dr. Kantorovich and Dr. Koopman, pioneered linear programming as a field of mathematics way back in the 1940s. Today, the concepts underlying linear programming are used in many different fields of work. For example, Airlines must fill their flights in the most profitable manner. Fertilizer manufacturers must mix their products in the best ratios to create fertilizers. Pharmaceutical companies look for the best mix for the nutritional supplements they sell. And conservationists must decide on fishing quotas to ensure that the fish populations are maintained. The value of linear programming to this kind of decision making has been recognized. In 1975, Dr. Kantorovich and Dr. Kupman were awarded the Nobel Prize for Economic Sciences for their pioneering work in linear programming. Of course, many linear programming problems are complex with many factors to consider and can only be solved using a computer. However, no matter how many factors must be considered, the underlying thinking is the same. In each situation, we decide on our objectives, we look at the constraints of the situation, and we try to make the best decision using the information we have. In the next few lessons, we will work through some linear programming problems together. As we do this, the definition of linear programming will make more and more sense to you. Identify a problem in your life that involves making a choice from among several alternatives. Describe the problem, state the objective, and identify the constraints of the problem.